Good evening. Welcome to the Good Friday Tenebrae service. I always wondered, why do they call it Good Friday? Why is it good that Jesus died? And although Jesus did die, the good that came of it is amazing. And it's wonderful. And so tonight, we celebrate Good Friday. And you'll notice that the lights are all the way up. And Fisher and Willow, thank you for lighting all the candles. And the light represents Jesus as the light of the world. And as we walk through the service, we know that when Jesus died on the cross, it was a dark world. And he went into the grave. And the light did not come back on until Easter Sunday morning. And the story reflects that. And so tonight, you will see us go through this particular service. And as we go through, the lights will go dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And then we will depart quietly in darkness to come back again on Sunday morning to see the light of the sunrise. Now, some of you um, have participated in the Easter sunrise service, and this year Easter is very early, and it's very, very chilly. And so uh, one of the trustees said, did you know, Pastor, that it's supposed to be like 35 um, on Sunday morning? And so we talked about it, and so evidently in the past, you folks have occasionally had Easter Sunday morning in the fellowship hall looking through the windows to the east and to see that come up. And so we're going to do that this Easter Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, and so if you'd like to come, you don't have to bring your winter coat. You just come and enjoy that, and then following that, we will enjoy then a great breakfast that the ladies are fixing for us. And then we have the two services, the 9 o'clock and then the 11 o'clock. And within that service, we are going to see again the Living Lord's Supper. And so we'll be able to do that and then share in Holy Communion. As we begin our Good Friday service, the quote is, We live and die. Christ died and lived. Let us bow our heads and hearts for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come together as a Christian people to celebrate, to remember, to mourn, and to be thankful for the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so, Lord, as we come together, may we find it a blessing in our lives that Jesus loved us so much to die on a cross for us. And we remember that tonight. And we continue our time of prayer as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. It's on page 297 in your hymn book. The words are on the screen. Let's stand together as we sing Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
please turn around and greet those around you with the joy of the Lord. We have a video that we would like to watch titled Reflections on Lent 2. The liturgy for this evening is in uh, page 848 in your hymnal, if you want to turn there. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities... Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, in the Lord's word I hope. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord there is plenteous redemption. Well 
precious Lamb of God, Messiah, pull for sinners slain. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, my father thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done
Good evening, everyone, and I'm so glad that you are here for this Good Friday service. It's often been said that Good Friday is the most difficult day of the year for Christians. But we have hope, don't we? Because Sunday is coming. Amen? From John chapter 2, starting with verse 13. Can you hear me okay? <clears throat> when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found them selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. May the Lord ask his reading, his blessings to the reading of this word. Our hymn of instruction is Alas and Did My Savior Bleed, 294. The words are on the screen. Let's sing it together. Remain seated.
The first reading. Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met with him there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some of the officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him when he said to them, I am he. They drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which was spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? The finishing of the first reading. The second reading. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. The completion of the second reading. The third reading. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As the disciples was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus. While Peter stood outside the door, so the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are you not also one of this man's disciples? Peter said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The ending of the third reading. The fourth reading. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and the temple where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? The chief priest then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. The finishing of the fourth reading. The fifth reading. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are you not also one of the disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of your servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, also asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once the rooster crowed. The finishing of the fifth reading.
the sixth reading. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves to judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. The finishing of the sixth reading. The seventh reading. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered. Then Jesus said, I am a Jew. Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for I was first born. For this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? The finishing of the seventh reading. The eighth reading. After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. The finishing of the eighth reading. The ninth reading. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers put a crown of thorns on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands and with a stick. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns, the purple robe, Pilate said to him, Behold, the man. When the chief priest and officer saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! The finish of the ninth reading. The tenth reading. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me, Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it has been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. The finishing of the tenth reading.
Upon this, Pilate sought to release him. But the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar, who is the king. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the pavement. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Pilate said, I wash my hands of this. And then he gave Jesus over to the religious authorities to be crucified. The finishing of the tenth reading. Or the eleventh reading, I'm sorry. The twelfth reading. So they took Jesus and went out along the streets with the people yelling, bearing his own heavy cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on his side and one on the other side. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. The finishing of the twelfth reading. The 13th reading. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier and also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let let us not tear it, but cast lots to see who it shall belong. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. Completion of the 13th reading. The 14th reading. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. The completion of the 14th reading. The 15th reading. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The completion of the 15th reading. The 16th reading, since it was a day of preparation in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross of the Sabbath, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and he broke the legs of the first and then of the other who had been crucified with Christ. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead and they did not break his legs. 
But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. At once there came out both blood and water. He who saw it had borne witness. His testimony is true. And he knows what he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says that he shall look on him with whom they have pierced. The completion of the 16th reading. All that is left is the Christ candle. The 17th reading. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was the disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission to take the body of Jesus to prepare for burial. So Joseph of Arimathea came and took away the body of Jesus off of the cross. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him at night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds of weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound him in linen cloths with spices. As the burial custom of the Jews, now in the place where he was crucified, there in the garden, was a tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there and then placed the stone over the tomb in darkness. The completion of the 17th reading. you know that place, the cross. At the feet of the cross, Jesus died for our sins. The devil thought he had won. There was darkness upon the land. Jesus was in the tomb. 
But what they didn't realize, the devil, was that Jesus was going to be raised on the third day. Amen. And so we leave in quietness and in darkness, awaiting that third day on Easter Sunday morning at dawn. May the Lord bless and keep you. And all God's people said, amen. The lights will um, be from the sanctuary, so hopefully you'll be able to get out uh, 